What's up guys? Today on Robbie's Reviews, I'm doing this 2018 Mercedes-Benz AMG E63S wagon. And I want to thank H. Greg Lux in Pompano Beach, Florida for giving me the opportunity to review this monstrous family station wagon. Let's go check it out. Alright, here she is. The 2018 Mercedes-Benz AMG E63S wagon. Finished in this nice metallic black. The black interior, all leather and suede. A lot of metal flake. The car is pretty dirty, but you can see all that metal flake in there. And as you can see, it is a wagon. Most of the E63S's are the sedan or saloons, but for 2018 and 2019, they uh, they made some wagons, and they are not only are they very hard to find at a dealership. But if you do find one, it's most likely going to be overpriced and may not have the exact options or colors that you want due to the fact that they made so little of them compared to the sedans. But uh, as long as there's demand in the United States for a fast wagon, Mercedes-Benz always delivers. So that's why Audi's coming out with the new RS6 Avant for North America uh, this coming year. And uh, BMW doesn't have any fast wagons, but Porsche has the... Uh, Panamera Turbo S e-hybrid sport Turismo that I actually drove a few weeks ago and after having just driven this I can safely say that uh, this is faster not only is it lighter but it's also just feels way more connected massive amount of torque just an all-around better car so like about a dozen other AMG models in the current lineup this uh, E63S is powered by the hand-built 4 liter twin turbo V8 which has the hot V so the turbos are in the valley so they stay nice and hot and there's much less than before if not zero uh, turbo lag compared to the old uh, M157 5.5 liter twin turbo V8s and uh, this engine produces 603 horsepower and 627 pound feet of torque and it's mated to a 9 speed AMG speed shift dual clutch transmission which is lightning quick, you don't even feel the shifts, and if you, if you want to feel the shifts, you put in race mode, you get a nice satisfying kick every time you upshift or downshift. It's really a great experience. And once again, I want to thank H. Greg Lux in Pompano Beach for allowing me to take this beast out. So I only drove it about a quarter mile or so from the dealership to uh, the spot where I do the videos, and uh, in that time, I was honestly blown away by just the raw power, comfort, and luxury that this car provides. Now we're going to get a much more in-depth feel for that when uh, we take the car out later on the road and really get a feel what it's like to drive this 600 plus horsepower all the drive super station wagon. I don't know if that's a uh, category yet in the uh, luxury vehicle segment, super station wagon or super wagon or uh, swagon I guess, but uh, this definitely started it. So this latest generation of E-Class, otherwise known as W213, was introduced in 2017. And the E63 variant was introduced in North America in 2018. So we get the sedan and the wagon. There's never been an E63 coupe, but if there was, it would probably sell pretty well. But between the C63 coupe and the soon-to-be-gone uh, S-Class coupe, it just didn't make much sense. So this example here is actually pretty fully loaded. The only options I noticed that it's missing are the multi-beam fully active LED headlights. It still has the LED active projector here, it's just that it doesn't have the full active swiveling components. It just has the uh, high beams here. It has um, the old Distronic Plus, which is now called Drive Pilot. So you have the radar sensors there, you have your front camera. And then for the self-driving, you know, which is actually much improved of the old Distronic Plus, You've got the stereo cameras here for the drive pilot. And you've got a heads-up display. And the only other thing I see that's missing are the carbon ceramic brakes, which is not really a necessary option. And other than that, it's got everything. See those nice uh, quad AMG chrome exhaust tips? A lot of chrome trim on this car. And because it's a wagon, a, lux a luxury wagon at that, um, it looks good. Especially with the uh, the brushed finish here, and then you got all the chrome, chrome on the door handles, the nice two-toned silver polished, and then satin wheels. 
and the main thing that you'd buy a wagon for, I'm assuming, is cargo space. So with most AMG models, or really every other Mercedes-Benz model, doesn't have to be an AMG, you have a uh, sensor down under the bumper, or a kick sensor. Many people just kick the bumper, you actually don't have to do that. You can just swipe your foot or do a kicking motion, and the trunk or hatch or lift gate in this case will pop up. And it really comes in handy if you're going to the grocery store or whatever and you've got, you know, two armfuls of groceries, supplies. And you could do the same thing by closing it. So if you don't want to use the buttons up here, the one on the right will actually, if the car is off and you hit the lock button, I guess we'll demonstrate it. So you hit it and the mirrors start to fold in and you can safely just walk away while it's closing. As soon as it shuts, then it's all locked. And you can walk away. Buttons. If not, if you don't want to do that, do the swipe again. So the vehicle stays locked. So if you close it again, just by using the button or kick function or whatever, it'll just lock. But if you want to lock it using the swipe function here, just like that. Kind of gimmicky, but it does come in handy. And uh, it's, it's nice to have it, especially, you know, if you need it. This vehicle actually has a full glass panel roof, which blends in so well with the black paint, you really can't tell what's glass and what's paint. They did a really good job with that. You got the V8 by turbo badging with the 4Matic Plus. And now 4Matic Plus is Mercedes AMG's new all-wheel drive system. So not only does it have torque vectoring, it could, it could send power anywhere to any wheel on the car, any, you know, depending on the scenario. And it also has a new drift mode. So, along with the new M5, you know, it's basically the same technology. If you put it into drift mode, it disconnects the front input shafts electronically, and it becomes like the old rear wheel drive E63, except it's got over 600 horsepower. So, if you like doing burnouts, but you want to have the safety and security of having all wheel drive, especially driving in the rain here in South Florida, or up north in the snow, you can have the best of both worlds. So you get your all-wheel drive whenever you want it, and then you can have rear-wheel drive whenever you want it. So it really is the ultimate all-around daily driver, race car, utility vehicle, family car. And while it's not cheap, I believe when this car was new, it's got about 12,000 miles on it now, but when it was new it was about 135 grand, and that's not even fully loaded. And even then, the value for what you're getting, when you consider other cars in the market, that actually don't even exist. There's really no other cars like this on the market. At least not until the new RS6 Avant gets here, but uh, let's hope H. Greg Lux gets one of those so we can do a proper head-to-head -head comparison. All right, now I'm gonna turn on the headlights and taillights and hazard lights so you guys can check them out. So put on the headlights here. All right, so as you can see, you have these nice, bright, amber turn signals in the front that become the daytime running lights after you turn them off, so they fade back to the white. You've got your low beam here, which is a full LED unit, and you've got your high beam there, which is an incandescent reflector. It says LED high performance as opposed to the LED multi-beam, which uh, in Europe they get a much crazier version of the multi-beam, but here we get kind of like a watered-down version. And you've got the full LED taillights. They're very, very nice to look at, especially at night. And I don't know if this is going to come through on the camera, but as you can see, they have like these organic stardust looking LEDs that really look incredible. And move around the camera, it looks like it's just it's like the night sky twinkling with all the stars. You can see it over here too. And of course you got your turn signals right in the mirrors, nice and bright. You can see it from all angles. Then you've got your side cameras here. That's for the surround view system. As well as the blind spot monitoring, which Mercedes really, really perfected in all their cars. I've driven many, many of the latest cars with uh, blind spot monitoring technology. And uh, Mercedes-Benz is by far, the hands down, the best. All right, so now let's turn off the lights, open up the hood, show you guys that nice four liter twin turbo V8. Off the ignition, put it back to auto, and then the lever down here.
All right. So you can see that hand built from Alfalterbach, Germany, twin turbo V8. And you can see the turbos there right in the valley, or the hot V. And that's the person who built the engine. One man, one engine policy through Mercedes Benz AMG. Typical Mercedes Benz engine bay. Lots of plastic covers and things you really wouldn't want to touch or mess with. Definitely leave that to the professionals. You've got the heat extractors back here that go up into the hood. There's lots of cooling. These engines, they they get hot, but then again, they like to run hot. So, I've ne I mean, I've had two different Mercedes Benzes, and um, they always like to run a little hot, but, you know, they're really at their best when they do. All right, let's close it down. Now, for those of you that have seen a regular non-AMG E-Class, so the E300, or even the E43 AMG, which is not really a full AMG model, it's very um, controversial. Some people believe that the cars that don't have the hand-built engine shouldn't bear an AMG badge. But this, however, is a full AMG through and through. And a lot of the cues you can tell is the Panamericana grill, which was introduced in 2018. You got the very, very aggressive styled bumpers. And you got the heat exchangers and all the oil cores up front. You got the big front lip. And then from the side, you've got more aggressive side skirts. You have the V8 bi-turbo badging, the large upgraded AMG brakes, and you've got the forged wheels. Got the Michelin tires. And then in the back, you have more AMG badging. You have the larger diffuser, and you have that classic AMG quad exhaust. Now, that's really it when it comes to the styling that separates it from a regular, you know, E-Class e wagon. So these cars are about, you know, understated luxury and performance. For the people who don't want to necessarily be noticed, but they still want all the same performance and luxury and amenities, creature comforts, that you'd come to expect from a car in this price range. Alright, so now let's step inside, check out the interior. All right, start it up. And now, like many other Mercedes AMG models and other car companies as well, if you want to get a loud startup, what you do is you go to ignition, then put it into race mode. And also, aside from that, one really cool trick or Easter egg about these cars, all the, uh, you know, the latest modern AMG vehicles, is called the Emotion Start System. So once you've done the race race mode or even without doing that or hitting the ignition you just hold down the left paddle like that and then you do hit start and it gives you an extra rev it revs it up even higher than it normally would which is honestly they didn't have to do it but it's just one of those things that makes these cars special really sets them apart from the rest all right so inside the 2018 e63s wagon you can see that it's very similar to other modern Mercedes models. You have the same kind of central layout here with the scroll wheel, touchpad, all your buttons and options here, auto start stop, camera system, your mode selector, manual shifting, suspension, traction control, You've got cup holders, ashtrays, charging ports, and you got all your AC controls. And being an AMG model, you got that nice IWC timepiece in the middle. And you got the string of pearls, AC vents here, nice contrast stitching that goes all over the dashboard. The full color heads up display. Displays speed limit, direction, speed, and uh, what you know, uh, autonomous driving features you have on or safety assists. And that's fully configurable too. And then my favorite part about all the 2014 and up Mercedes models are the ones that at least have it available are these two giant 12.3 inch LCD displays. This one's totally configurable. This one's configurable as well. You can have whatever displays you want. And it really is just something special. So you got your mode selector here. You can go here. Individual, comfort, and it changes here. So sport, sport plus, race mode, my personal favorite. And I actually just heard the exhaust valves open up and Sport Plus and Race. It's pretty loud. Nice uh, nice burbles. 
Now what I also love about all the new AMG models, especially the E63, is how simple it is to engage launch control or race start. Uh, very similar to pretty much every Porsche model. Um, I don't know if it's still super complicated in, in the M5. The first time I drove an F10 M5, it took me about 20 minutes to figure out how to use the launch control and then I had to resort to YouTube videos and forums. But with the AMGs, all you do is make sure that it's in race mode. And it is. Put your foot on the brake firmly, your left foot, and then right foot on the gas. And then, that's it. And if you want to cancel it, you just let your foot off the gas. And then, like I said, just, and the car knows what to do every time. Doesn't even, doesn't even skip a beat. All right, so I'm not going to really go through every last detail on the infotainment system on these cars. Like you guys saw in my G63 video, and you know other videos before that there's really a lot of stuff that's straightforward and even similar to other cars infotainment systems so you have your radio here you got your media where you can activate your Bluetooth everything you have your navigation so you have a very high definition map you can zoom out and do everything you've got your telephone car controls so you got seats massage dynamic seat which is the uh, bolstering here it was off, so I'll put turn it on. So the active bolsters will come on. Let's see what else you got. Climate control, dynamic select, track pace. That's pretty cool. Warning, use on racetracks only. So this basically allows you to keep track of your time, time slips, uh, lap times, whether you're on a drag strip or a road course. So we'll go to track. Let's see, all tracks. You got every, pretty much every track in the world. If you can't find a track here, then yeah. So you go back, you go to drag strips. You got acceleration, quarter mile braking, history, so you can try to beat your personal bests. Create a driver profile. You got assistance. So it's got traffic sign assist, camera and parking, active brake assist, attention assist, active lane keep assist, Active blind spot assist, and of course you've got the all the drive pilot features, so it's got the self-steering, braking, pretty much everything. We'll actually test out that parking later, that's pretty cool. Maneuvering assist. You could just open the camera if you want. Open the camera cover to clean it. An attention assist, put it to sensitive, always like having that. Active lane keep assist, adaptive or standard. Active blind spot assist, on or off, we'll leave that on, that's a lovely feature. Got consumption, light settings, vehicle settings, easy entry exit. Right, a lot of these nice features were off, we're doing somebody a favor, whoever buys this car. ambient light and it's pretty bright out right now you can't really see it but uh, let's see brightness and the brightness was wow very low we'll put it all the way up and we'll do uh, fire reds pretty cool you got red moon dawn blue sun yellow jungle green is pretty cool keep it on ocean blue for now actually yeah, we'll do purple sky that's very nice I don't know if you can see it here. It's probably some of the best ambient lighting in the game. You can see it on the, around the displays and everything. Kind of in the door panels here. Especially in the back. The door pockets. It's really very nice to have and it's around here too. thing about the new massage programs with this car, if you go to the vehicle button, go to seats, driver's seat, massage, and you have all the usual programs, but new for 2017 and up. You have wave massage, which is basically the back down to the butt, and then you have active workout back, so you basically push your back into the pressure spots, and then you have an active workout for your bottom. And uh, it feels weird, but uh, 
It's definitely different. I don't know any other cars that are doing an active butt workout. And if you could see it here, I've got all the uh, ambient lighting on. I changed it to the purple. And also change it so when you put the temperature down, see we go temperature down, changes to blue. When you put the temperature up, changes to red. It's pretty cool. So this car also has the base version of the Burmester audio system. You can get the optional Burmester 3D high-end system, but it's really overkill. So we got Sirius satellite radio here, not the usual HD FM, but we'll try this out. Doesn't have the gesture controls that are kind of gimmicky that the BMWs have, but we got the volume knob here. What we've got it on the steering wheel too. You got it over here. Sounds very nice, very, very clear. All the highs, mids, and lows. You got the speaker up here. You have the front base feature, which was introduced in the 2014 S Class, which basically turns the whole front dashboard area and underneath into a sub, sub enclosure, subwoofer. It's a nice effect. And what's cool about the gauge cluster here is if you don't like the big central tachometer with the digital speedo in the middle, you can actually go back here. Go to designs. You can have sport, classic, which is you know your classic gauges, and you can have the uh, navigation on the right. You know whatever you want. You just move the, this little thing to the right, so you basically go like that. You could choose you know tachometer, nav, tire pressure, just AMG there. Got your uh, your G meter there, G force. Your boost, horsepower, and pound feet of torque gauges, meters, fuel economy, navigation again, and then you can go to progressive, which is pretty you know futuristic looking. You can have you know any displays you want, the date, time, tire pressure, all the same you know info. <laughs> There's a circuit to spa Franca champs. I actually like the uh, the sport gauges, so we'll go back to that. So this car's got the nice, um, it's pretty much standard black open pour wood. You can get other types of wood or carbon fiber, or even different colors in the carbon fiber weave. But this open pour, nice, nice to the touch, goes with all the black leather. And then you've got the Alc Alcantara or Dynamica. Mercedes Benz does Dynamica, not Alcantara. Here on the seats, a few falter block crest here. Usually it's on the center console here. But um, they did this like split design here. It's actually pretty deep. SD card slots and charging ports there. Nice and deep. Close that up. And you've got the AMG logo there. It's nicely lined with this white piping. And you've got all the uh, perforation for the ventilation on the seats and they're heated as well. Massage. And then you got the bolsters that inflate when you're turning. So basically, the, kind of like the S-Class, which it was introduced on, whenever you're taking a turn, uh, if you're taking a right turn, the left bolster comes out and basically hugs you. Even if you're hitting like potholes or you know like dips in the road, it's pretty smart. And all the window switches are nice and metal. Got the door handles, everything is metal, cool to the touch. This has like a nice knurled look, which Bentley likes doing, but Mercedes has adopted it here. And then you've got these things that usually push in on the S-Class, but looks like they're fixed here. You basically click on and off for the uh, controls of the airflow coming out of the vents. And then for new for 2017 and up, you've got this nice frameless design over the dual screens instead of having an actual like border before with the buttons here in the middle. It's very nice. You've got the overhang, so no matter if it's bright out during the day, if you're driving into the sun or if the sun's behind you, you'll always see the screens nice and bright. They're very clear. Definitely the highest resolution graphics in the game. Really second to none. And like you'd expect from any AMG model, or really any Mercedes-Benz, the quality and fit and finish and attention to detail, all the stitching, it wraps around everywhere. There's like miles of stitching in this car. In the back seat, very roomy, spacious, plenty of headroom. Gotta love the wagon body style. Even the in the sedan, you have plenty of headroom. You got heated seats, cool seats are an option. You have the Burmester speakers, the window controls, 
big door bo door pockets. Plenty of bolstering on the rear bucket seats. Got that ambient light in there. Rear window shades. Really just a nice place to sit. And you've got the full leather wrapped flat bottom steering wheel with a little racing line here. And uh, the Dynamica is an option. I honestly prefer, if, I'm, if I have bare hands and I'm not driving with gloves, I really prefer to just have the perforated leather here. Really feels nice. Love the design here. Nice soft quilted leather. You got the wood, all the contrast stitching. Just continues there, like just all the little little details. All right, so now we're gonna get some startup and revs, and then we're gonna take it out for a ride and see what it's like. Let's take the E63S out for a drive. I'm gonna put it in uh, Sport Plus for now. Which keeps the RPMs high. We'll leave it in the shifting mode in automatic. In Sport Plus, the shifts kick very hard. Actually comparable to the Aventador with the uh, semi-automated manual gearbox. And right off the bat, I noticed that the E63S feels stiffer, more controllable, and lighter on its feet than the much heavier, but also more powerful, E-Hybrid Turbo S Panamera. Especially go around the uh, curvy back street to this business complex. The E63S is very playful, also very forgiving. Do a, bit of, do a little bit of manual downshifting to get those amazing pops. Yeah, it makes a pretty tight U-turn. And uh, it pulls like a freight train. That 627 pound-feet of torque is available very low in the RPM range. It stays steady, almost to redline along with the 603 horsepower. It is really unlike anything I've ever driven. The electric power steering is variable and it adjusts to the right situations. It really is just a lovely car to drive. Now I've got it, so I put it back in the Sport. So the RPMs calm down. Suspension actually softens up a little bit. Now so you put it in comfort. The exhaust flaps close, it becomes very, very quiet. And the ride, while still kind of stiff compared to other cars, becomes much more compliant. Yeah, even in race mode, Suspension is very stiff, the steering is even tighter, but in sport handling mode, you feel those active engine mounts and the active air struts doing their thing, and that active bolstering on the seats keeping you in place. And uh, this back road here is very, very uh, pothole ridden, but even then the rides are compliant. It's, it's very stiff, but it's also not sloppy. So we'll turn around a second and do a race start for you guys. And at the flip of a switch, Jekyll and Hyde goes from a calm, collected, you know, ec economical family station wagon and turns into a total fire breathing monster. 
Gotta love those, those downshifts and the backfires. All right, so we're gonna turn around, do a little race start. All right, here we go. Just like that with a zero to 60 of 3.1 seconds which honestly this felt even quicker than that and it just handles like it's on rails it's so dynamic in the way that it handles situations Really is an absolute joy to drive. This is a it's funny. This is my first time driving an E63 period, and it happens to be this 2018 wagon. Well, after driving spiritedly and doing some race starts in the E63S wagon, a nice way to know that the GoPro is still there is that surround view. And wow, it's very high quality. That is a great feature. Got all your different angles. Gotta love it. So along with changing the gauge cluster display, if you go to, let's see here. So heads up display, display content. There's a whole different bunch of designs you can choose or layouts. Along with position and brightness, so my personal favorite You've got the big one here with the lap timer. Then you've got the smaller uh, tachometer with the speedo and the speed limit. And it's very bright. Very nice to have. Definitely going to leave it on that setting. All right, so now we're back in the H. Craig Lux lot. Let's try out that self parking. All right, so it says drive forward to search for parking spaces. It is now searching for a parking spot. That looks like a good one right there. I wonder if it'll find it. So stop vehicle to park. And then hit this to confirm. Then it says engage reverse, so engage reverse. It puts the turn signal on, let go of brake, and uh, it's doing its thing right now. This is pretty weird. This is weird. Wow. Holy crap. It's fixing itself. It's actually self-conscious about how it parked and now it's fixing itself. <laughs> oh my God. This is incredible. And that's it. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that should do it for this review of the 2018 Mercedes-AMG E63S wagon. See you next time.